Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Today, uh, we're going to do some honeybee decor. I have an area in the store that uh, where we sell honey, and um, I mentioned in my last video that uh, we were going to start uh, just kind of going around the whole store, um, filling in and um, and decorating. So uh, I'm the next area after the farmhouse decor or my husband's little area is the little area that has the honey so uh, i'm going to start by working on this rolling pin and i've been lucky enough lately to find some rolling pins to redo and i like that because um they sell really quickly in my store and before anyone asks, yes, I am sick, but I am recovering, so I needed to get this video out. I kept waiting on my voice to change, and it hasn't happened yet, so uh, I'm sorry that I don't sound like myself, but I am starting to feel better. The flu has been going around in my family, so I assume that that's what I've had, uh, but... Um, I am very lucky that we took the week after Christmas off in the shop so I didn't have to go in uh, and, and take a chance on making anybody else sick. So this is the color Daisy and that's a Dixie Belle color and uh, I'm giving it two coats of the color Daisy and then I just took my little finger sander and uh, distressed it just a little bit. And then I went over just the handles with the Van Dyke Brown Glaze because I wanted to tone this yellow down and make it look more aged. But I decided to add a transfer first. And this is from the set Sunflower uh, in Dixie Belle. And so I'm just going to put a couple of the sunflowers, one on each end and kind of staggered in the middle so that each way that you turn the rolling pin, you'll see somewhat of uh, the transfer. Now, I'm not making this one uh, as a uh, food safe one. I guess you could clear coat it really well and let it cure for uh, quite a while and it would be food safe. Uh, but I'm just making this one with decor in mind and I'll make sure that whoever buys it knows that. But I find that most people who buy rolling pins like this aren't buying it to use. They're just buying it to display in their home. Now, I know that I said this was honeybee decor, but for some reason, I think honeybees and sunflowers are kind of associated with each other. I'm not sure why, because... Uh, I don't think it's one of the bigger ones that, um, no pun intended, that um, the honeybees pollinate from. Uh, but I don't know, I guess just the look maybe because the uh, sunflower is yellow and almost yellow and black. Maybe that's why that they're associated with each other. I also want to apologize that I'm pretty far behind on my comments right now. So part of that is because of the holidays and part is because I haven't felt like it. But um, I will try to get those caught up this week. Now because this is supposed to be honeybee themed decor, I, I am going to stamp a couple of bees on uh, the areas that don't have a transfer. And I wasn't sure that this would work very well, but I just very carefully rolled the rolling pin as I pressed on the stamp. And it actually worked out really well. Then after I got the honeybees stamped on, then I added that Van Dyke Brown Glaze to the handles. And, and once I got the um, brown glaze on the handles, then um, I went over the transfer with a matte finish clear coat because I didn't want to change the uh, the look of the wood at all. So, and then this was finished. And I forgot to mention that I finished this off with a hang tag. So that was the first item complete. 
And then the next item that I'm going to do is uh, make over this little lantern. So this is the color that I purchased it in. And I think I thrifted it for just a few dollars. And, um, and I'm just going to do a little bit of fake distress with a marker on this. Or that was the plan anyway, but it just seemed like it was way too dark. So what I ended up doing was I went ahead and finished uh, some distressing with this. And then I went over this with the Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And then it wasn't so dark and it worked a lot better. So I just kept rubbing that brown glaze on. And uh, again, that blended that a little better. It actually took a little bit of the marker off and uh, it worked out well. What I didn't know uh, that my sister told me is that um, stays on ink can be stamped on to glass. So that excited me and I thought this would be a good little item to stamp on the glass with. So I'm just, once I get this brown glaze on here, then I'm gonna stamp some of those little honeybees on the glass. So if you haven't tried stamping on the, the stays on ink on glass, uh, then you should try it because it amazed me. I thought it would kind of smear as you stamp it, but it, it actually didn't. It went on really well. And one of the times that I stamped this on, I actually felt like maybe it moved a little bit. And so I really expected that one to be smeared, but it really wasn't. It, it worked out great. And as you can see, it shows up really, really good. And now I'm just taking a couple of scraps of fabric, and I think one of these is even just cheesecloth, and tying them around the top. And then I'll add a hang tag to this and put a little tea light candle in it, and this one will be finished. And then the next item that I'm um, making over is a little box that was given to me by my friend, and uh, I've had it in the store a little while and it just hasn't sold. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, decorate this one for this area also. And because it's black on the outside and the inside, I'm not going to have to paint the box anywhere except on the very top. And I think this is a really pretty design that's on here, but for whatever reason it hasn't sold. So I'm just going to paint it in the color buttercream and then let that dry well. And then I'm going to decoupage um, a napkin over the top. And I'm taking my finger sander and uh, going over the whole box because uh, especially with black, when you distress it down, it just gives it a lot richer feel. And so I distressed all the black in all the high spots. And then I went over it with the Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And um, that's all that I did to the black areas. And this napkin was a perfect fit for this. So um, I could do four of these, but they almost fit exactly. So once I got this covered well, uh, I went over it with, uh, some more Mod Podge and then let that dry and then I just took my little finger sander and sanded the edges to finish those off smooth. And then again, because this is honeybee decor, I'm going to stamp that little honeybee on the top of this box also. And then after I finished uh, stamping the little honeybees on, uh, then I went around the edges of this white with some of the antique oxide just to give it um, more of a finished look. Some people don't care for um, the antiquing around the edges of their projects, but the ones that I can do them on, I feel like it makes a really big difference uh, and just helps it to look a lot more finished. And in this case, I think it just really, really warmed up this box. And this was actually when I decided that I needed to uh, distress the black and use the Van Dyke Brown Glaze on it because I felt like after this was warmed up so much that the black also needed that. So again, I just took my little finger sander and sanded some of the black 
and uh, just went around all those little raised areas and then um, and then went over that with the Van Dyke brown glaze from Dixie Belle. And then obviously I made a little hang tag for this one. Now the next item that I'm gonna make over is a little birdhouse. And although I like this one the way it is, um, I'm gonna make this one fit into the bead, bead decor. And birdhouses this size don't really sell for me unless I do something different with them. So I'm gonna take this candle stand here and um, and kind of marry it together with this. And then this little block. This is a little block that I had made and it, the stamp turned out wrong on it. So it ended up in my uh, makeover area. So I'm gonna cut this little prong off the top for the candle. And then I'm gonna paint both of these uh, black. And so I just spray painted both of them black. And then I went over the birdhouse, roof and all, with one coat of the color buttercream. And I'm not worried about full coverage here because I want to do some extra distress on this. And I'm also going to be um, doing some decoupage on the body of this. So again, I painted one coat on uh, the body and the roof of this. And then once that dried, then I'm going to decoupage one layer of this napkin on the front only. And I'll have to tear the bee from the center out because of that hole. So I just very carefully decoupage that on. And then, um, and then I cut away the excess. And then once this dried, then I just took my little finger sander and finished cleaning up what I wasn't able to get cut off. And then I took the birdhouse outside and heavily sanded the roof and then added some Van Dyke brown glaze, uh, which I wasn't happy with how the roof turned out uh, because too much of that blue came through. So um, I went ahead and glued everything together and I'm using the tight bond thick and quick and I'm using my little block to raise the birdhouse up some and make it a little more substantial. And I also wanted to add that wood touch. So I wanted more of that wood to show through on the roof, but I probably shouldn't have painted it black if I wanted that. Uh, but I was actually trying to bring some of that black up also. Uh, but what I end up doing is uh, taking a pine or some pine cones apart and just kind of using my clippers to cut all the little prongs off the pine cones and then I've then I started just gluing those on like I was gluing shingles on and I just glued those on with hot glue so I will say that this took a bit um, because you're having to glue each of those individually and uh, they're probably not the easiest to remove from the pine cone, uh, but my sister helped me with that. But I do, do think it worked really well uh, as shingles. It just had a really pretty look, and I think the pine cone on the birdhouse is kind of appropriate anyway. And um, so what I did is I started on the bottom, and then... And then for the next layer, where I could, I um, just kind of went in the middle of where the ones on the bottom was. So if that makes sense, I tried to just kind of um, stagger it a little bit. But because of the shape and the size of some of those, I wasn't always able to do that. But it still works out even when it's not perfectly centered. So again, I just kept gluing those on until both sides were covered. And this is what I ended up with. And I, I really like the look of it. I like how the pine cones bring out the wood there in the center. And I thought about wrapping some grapevine or something around it. But in the end, I, I liked it more simple like this. Now, uh, what I could have done, I added a bee hang tag to this, and I could have also stamped a little bee on here, and I may go back and do that. But that's the last item, and here is how my area is looking so far. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next.
Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.